Yo, how's your butts, guys? I'm Peter Pumpkins, and today we are talking about the end of an era. All of the Crucible Pinnacle weapons, how they dominated PvP and PvE for over two years, are finally going away. And let's talk about them. That's Redrick's Claymore, Redrick's Broadsword, Luna's Howl, Not Forgotten, The Mountaintop, The Recluse, and The Revoker and maybe a couple others sprinkled in, how these weapons dominated the PvP and, more importantly, the PvE sandbox for over two years. If this is your first time here, guys, hit that like and subscribe. Turn on the little bell. Ding, ding, ding. You get notifications saying that I made a video and it's up. It's pretty sick. But all that aside, let's get into the video. And first, we're going to go all the way back into year one of Destiny 2, season three, Redrick's Claymore. Redrick's Claymore was released at the end of Season 3, so the season before Forsaken, as a kind of a way to get people to play the comp playlist, because in Year 1 Destiny 1, when we had the double primary loadouts, a lot of people didn't play comp because it wasn't enjoyable to play, not to mention it had Survival, Countdown, Clash, Control, it had many more game modes in it than what current comp does. Not to mention, the biggest drawback and what made this gun so difficult to get was not only the low player base of the competitive playlist, but also how difficult it was to reach Fabled, which was the only requirement for Redrick's Claymore. Now you guys may be familiar with this because Mountaintop, Recluse, and Revoker, they all had similar quest steps in their quest, reaching Fabled or 2100 score. Glory Rank was one of the quest steps. However, back in Season 3 and all of Year 1 of Destiny 2, it was much more difficult to actually gain a Glory Rank. Just to emphasize how much more difficult it was to actually get to Rank Fabled in Glory, a Redditor way back then in 2018 actually figured out the math to see what it was. If you won and lost every other game, you had a 50% win rate, you won every other game, you would have to have played 440 games to actually reach Rank Fabled. That's ridiculous. For a 50% win rate, winning every other one was nuts. Comp was much different back then, so not only was it more difficult to gain, but also you had loss streaks, sort of like a win streak is now. They've since changed how the competitive playlist gains and loses glory, and most of it is for the better for us. But enough about how to get the gun. What was the gun? How was Redrick's Claymore so good? So if you know what Redrick's Broadsword is, which is still a quest that you can get in the Crucible today, Redrick's Claymore is the same thing, other than it doesn't have the same name. Redrick's Claymore is kind of a badge of honor for the people that earned it in Season 3. And so, the perks, the main perks for Redrick's Claymore and Broadsword are Desperado and Outlaw. Outlaw's pretty familiar, precision kills greatly increase the next reload. And also Desperado, reloading while Outlaw is active increases your rate of fire. Redrick's Broadsword is a 340 RPM, three burst pulse rifle. So it's a slow firing, high impact pulse rifle. When Desperado is active, it actually becomes a 540 RPM pulse rifle, still a three burst, but it retains the same impact. So it spins up, it shoots faster, and still has the high damage of the 340 making this shred through people. Year one, the weird TTKs, it was still only a two burst. All six precision shots hitting would kill an enemy guardian, which greatly increased its TTK much higher than any other gun at that point in time. It never really got a ton of usage just because it was so difficult to get. The glory, the competitive playlist and how you obtained glory back then in year one was very difficult. So many people just didn't get it. It was a great weapon and we saw a bunch of people get some really great clips with it, especially since this was not really an exciting time in Crucible. The Pinnacle weapons didn't pick up yet until the next two came out. With the release of Forsaken, we got one new Pinnacle weapon that was announced in Luna's Howl, and this was similar to the quest step that you had for Redrick's Claymore, but quest steps were rebuilt. Competitive playlist was actually retuned, so it was slightly easier to get fabled or 2100 glory points to get this gun but there was also more steps than to just do that you had to get 150 precision hand cannon shots 200 solar kills um, and also play a couple rumble matches so it took a little bit more time you actually had to spend some time in the competitive playlist specifically to get this gun and luna's howl was almost a rite of passage for anybody that played pvp this gun was especially lethal 
on controllers and especially lethal on console due to the weird recoil patterns that 150 and 140 hand cannons had so this was a 180 had a very short recoil very straight up and down it actually had perfect in-air accuracy um, being a precision hand cannon but the thing that set it apart more than that was the perk magnificent howl which was two precision shots in a row greatly increased for a short period of time the third shot so when it originally came out either headshot or body shot would be increased by lunas howl so technically if you had the perk set up correctly you could two tap headshot with this gun and i forgot to mention that if you decided to go all the way up and reach 5500 score in comp reach legend you would also get not forgotten after completing a short quest with lunas howl as well so these two guns were released lunas howl had slightly better handling and stability but not forgotten had so much range for a 180 hand cannon it was by far the best gun for crucible at that point in time dominance that lunas howl and not forgotten had in pvp especially on console did not go unnoticed by bungie the dominance that these two hand cannons you had in especially the comp playlist in destiny 2 came crashing down in april of 2019 only about eight months after these guns released these guns were nerfed and they took a pretty big hit on paper it didn't seem like it was a lot but they bumped down the rpm to 150 so it fired slowly but still retained the same intrinsic perks that precision guns have um, with that small short vertical recoil and perfect in-air accuracy but they also changed Magnificent Howl. Magnificent Howl no longer procced and actually counted as a damage boost for precision shots. This meant you could not two tap headshot anymore. These guns did not feel the same after these nerfs and the usability and the usefulness of these guns went way down in this show in the Crucible. These no longer stayed meta as much. They still stayed meta for some people on console because they were just a lot easier hand cams to use than what 150s and 140s do. That brings us to the next and the most gruesome pinnacle weapon ever, the Mountaintop. The Mountaintop was announced as a pinnacle weapon shortly before Season of the Forge in November of 2018. And... It had a short little trailer with it showing it off and everybody was like what in the hell is this what is Bungie thinking giving us a mini rocket launcher in the kinetic slot yes it was a breech load grenade launcher that shot a straight line missile with the intrinsic perk called micro missile also with spike grenades or sticky grenades it also fired much faster than what normal breech load grenade launchers did, going at 40% faster fire rate. So this made direct impact damage increase and also much easier to aim than a regular breech load grenade launcher, which always has an arc and it doesn't shoot out fast enough to shoot in a straight line. Initially, Mountaintop wasn't used a ton in PvP, but when the PvE players got their hands on it after completing the kind of difficult quest that made you once again get fabled in the comp playlist you had to get 750 kills with a grenade launcher 200 double kills with a grenade launcher and 100 trajectory medals now this would get nerfed later on down the line knocking it down to 75 double kills and 25 trajectory medals which if you did this when it first came out within the first few months of it came out was a huge pain it was not easy to get these grenade launcher kills because pretty much meant you either had to go for heavy and use a heavy grenade launcher or you're going to use malicious birthright or fighting lion which took a lot more time to actually get used to and learn how to use once people finally started getting their hands on the mountaintop especially in pve this was almost a staple in every single kind of difficult content solo content any kind of solo challenge you would ever use mountaintop was always used and usually paired with the warlock which still at that point in time luna faction boots actually still were reloaded so you could just fire this thing off as fast as it would fire without having to worry about reloading it was absolutely broken in pve but moving on to pvp it still wasn't used a ton in the early in the first few months it actually didn't start to get used a ton in pvp until closer to where we are now in shadow keep 
It was still used a ton, but I think it was, there was, used to be kind of a gentleman's agreement, and this goes all the way back into things like Last Word and Lord of Wolves whenever they were just absolutely broken in PvP, especially on PC. You didn't really use it, and if somebody did, the whole lobby ended up using it. Um, so it was kind of funny. So people gave it a little bit more respect back then, and people didn't use it unless they just absolutely had to. And the next pinnacle weapon that actually came out during Season of the Drifter was the Recluse. And this actually ended up increasing as a byproduct of it being an energy weapon and Mountaintop being kinetic. It actually ended up getting used almost together, like it was, uh, all the time. If you put Recluse on, you probably had Mountaintop on. It was just so much easier to use than a sniper rifle or anything else in the primary slot. They were like peas and, and carrots. Cat Recluse was announced shortly before Season of the Drifter in February of 2019. It didn't really get as much of a reception as what Mountaintop did. Everybody was calling it calling Mountaintop like we know this is going to be broken in some aspect. But Recluse really didn't get that respect until a couple months after it came out. Still during Season of Drifter, but it really didn't see its chance to shine until a little bit afterwards. So, Recluse had two perks that actually worked really well together and maybe an overall third perk that made this just absolutely most busted primary especially legendary primary that we've ever had in destiny 2 it had master of arms which increased the damage you got to kill with another weapon or if you got to kill with that weapon and it didn't require any reloading or anything to actually keep the damage perk it would just keep on going as long as you were getting kills so you could kill something with mountaintop switch to recluse and get a 30 percent damage buff back then before damage perks were nerfed and that was ridiculous you'd shred through people and feeding frenzy pre-nerf by the way was absolutely ridiculous you'd almost get outlaw speeds just by killing something without ever having to shoot them in the head to mention master of arms buffed body shot damage to the same as precision shot damage when it was active it was absolutely nuts it's still a really great weapon today, even with its nerfs to Master of Arms and to Feeding Frenzy. So just a few months after it was released, up until now, prior to Beyond Light, Recluse is probably still one of the most used PvE weapons in the game, even with the nerfs to Master of Arms and Feeding Frenzy, which really did hurt this weapon a lot. It's actually shown the rise of a lot more SMGs, like the Ikelos SMG and the Seventh Seraph SMG that have multiple perks that... Um, Recluse just can't get combined with a bunch of other things you can even say like Nezarek Sin like this gun was absolutely busted and then to pair it with something like Mountaintop or the next crucible weapon that came out the next crucible pinnacle which was the revoker a 72 rpm kinetic sniper rifle with snapshot and a perk called reversal of fortune and what this reversal of fortune did was if you missed a shot with revoker it would return one to the magazine that would return a shot to the magazine even if you had nothing so if you had zero you shot one missed it it would return one to the magazine this made this absolutely busted for people that were really actually learning how to use snipers and i think that's what the intention was for people that were learning to use snipers it was teaching them to you know don't be afraid to miss and it did instead it kind of became a cheater's <laughs> paradise they could <laughs> And that's what it became. Revoker became the cheater's weapon, and Mountaintop eventually, especially when Trials came out a year later, Mountaintop would be the anti-cheater gun. But why was Revoker kind of a cheater's gun and also kind of a noob gun? Well, it wasn't super difficult to get. During this season, Season of the Drifter, they actually changed how the quest worked and to get um, these weapons. You no longer had to reach 2100. In the Crucible, you actually just had to reach a total of 3,500 glory earned. It didn't matter what you lost, you just had to earn 3,500 glory. So if you just won five matches and you lost five, you just gained all the glory that you got from those five matches. You wouldn't actually lose it. This also required you to get 300 sniper rifle kills in the Crucible and 50 sniper precision rifle kills. So this wasn't super hard to get. And it was just a really great weapon with it. So it came kind of the noob's paradise. And paired with Recluse, it was absolutely ridiculous. During the summer of 2019, Bungie had kind of realized that these pinnacle weapons were really dominating the playstyle and not only PvE and PvP because they all had these unique perks as legendary weapons. And especially a perk like Master of Arms that really should have been an exotic perk. And Mountaintop, which really should have been an exotic weapon. 
and you could use these as legendary. So these pinnacle weapons, the usage was astronomical compared to every other weapon. So Bungie stopped making pinnacle weapons and started releasing ritual weapons, and that's where we get things like Randy's throwing knife, which are still really good weapons, but they're just not quite there. And Bungie has since said that they will not be making pinnacle weapons again just because of how high the usage was and how these guns kind of kind of broke some PvE, especially mountaintop pre lunar faction and rally barricade nerf where you could just fire them off constantly um, and especially with master of arms and feeding frenzy on recluse not only was that it was a lightweight smg like these guns just had so much these guns were literally exotic weapons masked as legendary weapons so you may be wondering was like why did why did pete you spend so much time making this video and talking about these guns that i already know about well i just wanted to document and say goodbye to these weapons because come beyond light november 10th they're all going to be sunset not to mention are they going to be sunset and not reusable in pinnacle activities that power level matters they've also received several nerfs um recluse with feeding frenzy and master of arms damage perk nerfed come shadow keep and feeding frenzy shortly after that but mountaintop become in beyond light is going to get a nerf to in-air accuracy it's also going to get slowed down and the explosion, the blast radius is going to be a lot smaller. So these guns are going to be really specific to certain things if you want to do them. And they're not going to be usable in high level activities. And quite frankly, I'm going to miss them, but I'm kind of glad to see them go. I want to see new weapons come in to Destiny that replace these. I want to see a little bit more variety because for a while there, it seemed like if you didn't have Recluse on... To do a difficult activity like you were handicapping yourself if you didn't have mountaintop in certain situations it really felt like you were handicapping yourself i think in two of the solo flawlesses dungeons that i've completed i've used one or two um so, sometimes two together in mountaintop and recluse in those pinnacle activities so they're gonna be missed but i just wanted to document what these guns were and how big of an impact they had on the year two and year three sandboxes of Destiny 2. Well, that's it for my send off of the Crucible, Pinnacle Weapons, the end of an era. If you guys liked what you saw, please like and subscribe, hit the bell, leave some comments down below. Tell me how you feel about these weapons getting nerfed. Tell me how you feel about these weapons leaving, getting sunset. What's gonna replace them? What have you been using to replace those? But thanks for watching once again, you guys. Have a great butt and keep it safe.